Hey guys, this is uh, Jake Diagrella. I am the co-director of Faces in the Crowd. And I'm uh, Zeke Morgan Hine, and I was the writer, co-director, and uh, supporting cast. <laughs> Do you remember? Supporting cast. Supporting cast and production and, and production designer. design. But basically, I wrote and co-directed. That's the big things. Basically, our leader, our leader in the charge. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> no, it's team effort, team effort. But this Massive is our uh, commentary. Yes, this is our commentary so, track for Faces we're, in the Crowd. We're just going to go through, watch it. We're going to pause it on some bits because I don't think we can pump all the information out in 8 minutes 43. So yeah, they, they struggle to do it in films, the two and a half hour films. I know. It's always crazy. Russian, yeah. So do you want to just All right, we're gonna going to hit play on this bad boy and uh, here we we'll go. We'll go through the talking. I always love that shot. Oh, like, it's beautiful. This, that... I remember very early on... Um, it was a cutaway, eh? Or it we, was a cutaway. Um, it was a whole another scene. We uh, we shot in there. There I am. Um, <laughs> Looking good. Yeah. I always find it was really interesting because the whole point in early production was to um, do a long shot because we wanted a real Birdman-inspired... Yes, um, that's right. ...sort of... I loved in Birdman how they uh, built the universe um, and the theatre was the universe. So I wanted mm. us to do a big long shot. I ended up doing two big long shots. We did a few, quite a few long shots. Yeah. And um, this is the only one that really survived. It's a minute um, and five seconds. Something like that. Yeah. We can kind of um, count it actually in a minute. Yeah. We can see when it cuts. But um, yeah, no, we needed our kind of Birdman. Um, oh, just pause it. We'll just pause it here because I want to talk okay. about that first bit. All right. So. Great pause. No, is it? That's great. <laughs> um the See, first it's a minute. Minute, there's, there's some really funny bits in that first minute um the, like for instance the cutaway for the the poster but um the first time James threw the uh, tray at the very door. very first like rehearsal yes so we did the we did a, like a dummy <laughs> a, a proof of concept video we were and, running through it yeah. yeah and i was walking through the scene and i don't know the camera was on yeah, I think I think I think Selena was had the camera rolling yeah. to get the shot right. We were just running through it, and I was just walking through the shot. And James pegged the uh, <laughs> the tray at the at the door, and it, almost whacked you in the very first. Go. It was literally we might have said we set everything up ready to go, and the main actor nearly knocked out the director. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Well, it's great. It's on footage, and it will be in the blooper reel. So look out for it. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> It was a scary because this because we fr- hadn't set our cues yet properly. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was pretty funny because it's kind of like we were just walking through and it got nearly clocked. And then <laughs> that take actually <laughs> the tray does you don't see it in the shot, but the tray actually goes on to hit me in the hip, like the lower hip area. What the in that or the I, one that's in the film? Which I, shot? That one, I think, in the film, it actually oh, hits, wow. the food hits me. As oh, it bounces okay. off the tray, I didn't even know that. Um, the food actually hits me on the way down. Wow! Uh, and at this point, I think we had ran through it maybe five or six times. Oh, we uh, went through that first take so many times because we wanted to make yeah. it perfect. POC and the actual <laughs> shoot. There's a funny bit in. So the bit where we're walking down. Do you want to go back to that bit where we're walking down the stairs? Yeah. Right. This is a. I want to just walk through this bit. So this. So here we go. Obviously, there's a flight of stairs, and we. Don't oh, have, how we did this? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to explain it? Yeah, okay. You I'll direct this part. I'll pause it. Uh, I'll wait for a good pause moment, and then when you turn, when you I turn. Say, yeah. All right, that's fine. Right. Um, so how we did this because obviously we had Selena, our cinematographer, shooting it, um, and she kind of has to walk down the stairs backwards, which is a bit bit of a hazard. Uh, Very so much so. What we did, we had several people, especially when you got um, that wide frame stabilizer. Exactly. Of. You know, she's holding this big stabilizer. It's already kind of you know, um, holding her arms up the whole time and then having to just kind of, you know, guess the stairs. We didn't want that. So what we did, we actually had um, we had a few people around. So if you noticed earlier in this shot, I'm actually opening the fridge. You're, That's me at the so front. So with this shot, because it's such a long shot, I coordinated the first half of the shot. Yeah, and you coordinated the second half of the show. Basically, shot. yeah. Um, like... and that's actually that repeats twice because when he does the walkout, it's the same thing. You oh, coordinate yeah. the first half, I coordinated the second half. That's of the right, because of the way the rooms worked. Yeah, we could only be in certain rooms at a time because yeah. of what's in front of the camera. So you were in the first room, I was in the second room. Yes, and that's kind of how it went. Yeah. So for the first half of the shot, um, James Mooney, who you'll see in glimpse later on, he called action because obviously I can't. That's call right. Action. Yeah. Um, because I'm in the movie. But... And I'm in the other room. So and you're yeah. in the other room. So you called the cue for the tray. 
Right, and... I cue James to throw the tray because what happens when I'm in the fridge, as soon as the camera turns around, I go from acting mode to directing mode. Yeah. Uh, and I cue Phoebe, who um, she did our makeup stuff in the film, yeah. and she was also the ex wife on the photo frame. Um, and James's she was girlfriend. There to, <laughs> and James's girlfriend. Uh, she basically um, snuck out when I gave her the cue that the camera was away, uh, held on to Selena to guide her That's down so the funny. stairs. Um, it's such a weird yeah. thing to think. It was such a weird thing to look at too, because it was like I wish I'd got some footage of you, it. You, but like for me, it was like because this is uh, this is a lot of firsts for me. This is my first directing right, yeah. gig, like with a group. Uh, my first, I would say, this is my first directing gig. Yeah. Um, this is the first film that I'd I'd say I've I've written um, for for a for a directing gig yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. It's the first time I've acted too. Like really okay. acted. Nice. Um, did a good job, lot of, friend. A lot of first. Yeah. Well, to be fair, all I was doing was playing an on-stage director. Basically, <laughs> I was I was actually angry. Yeah, you were uh, actually directing James, and we recorded it and pretended those yeah, were the lines yeah. in that film. That's, That's a, a lot of pent up frustration I've had with James. <laughs> I wanted to get it all out on screen. I was like, yeah, yeah. but I find that funny. It came uh, off really well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I was the. I don't think I have an acting range at all. I think basically it was like, oh, you're playing a stage manager, so you're basically playing a really grumpy manager. I mean, you you did you write that role for yourself, or did you just kind of later? Well, remember in the very early days. Mm. Um, the executive, the EP, Damien, um, wanted me to be. That's right. He suggested you be Frank Reynolds. Like do a Woody uh, Allen. We had already cast the James at the stage. Yeah, so. and I was never going to play. Yeah, I am not. Uh, I hope to get better at acting, but I'm not going. To it be wasn't. An actor. It wasn't now. No, this was. This was James. This, this is exactly. I played exactly what needed to be played. I don't. I think a lot of people could have played a manager role. Right. I think. I think I just have the demeanor of a grumpy looking man, so it's like I think it's it's also like a lot of just kind of that insight thing of like our little you know our little local community who yeah. knew and knew about the film while we were making it and that whole thing. It was like it was a nice kick to have you on the screen for the first minute or so yeah. and just have that role. Was, I think I loved it. I really did. I got a good yelling voice, as you've heard a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, true. <laughs> I can yell. You got different ranges of yelling and different yeah, types. Different it's aggression. Yeah. Um, some of them I'm like defeated, and then some of them I'm like I'm about to kill you. Right. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to walk <laughs> through that sort of spirit. We called her the spirit animal. That's right. Um, I remember because she just guided Selena through, and I really yeah. like that but, um, the shot. Um, it's good because um, we did, you know, and it was actually. Um, later on, you will notice that a lot of the long takes we did ended up getting spliced um, kind of back and forth between the rooms. Yeah. And it definitely gave it that more uh, kind of interesting Yeah, when well, we get to it, we can definitely talk about it. And um, it was actually, it was, um, we were just saying Damien, our, um, our EP, it was kind of his suggestion watching one of the rough cuts to maybe we could try something like this. And what we started, me and Zeke, we kind of, I think for about a week, we were really debating on whether we wanted to do it. Yeah. And then I think we, we just sat down and kind of wrote... What are the, what are the cutting points? Yeah. Um, and I think we really yeah because we watched that that shot we the whole watched way through. It. We just kept watching the dailies and we're like, where do we cut? I just I I always really think about how much time we actually put in, which is such a weird thing to think about. Oh man, because like, no, it was about really... a, it was about three months from from our crew, mm. you know, from from basically selecting our crew, yeah, um, to finishing the film, having the final cut. Kind of that it was about three month period, and we worked our asses off that entire three months. Yeah. It was just insane. crazy. To there's think so about much, now. yeah. There's so much, especially with um stuff we're doing now. It's kind of like oh, it's insane. It's you forget how much we did. We, I mean, do we? The reality was so this is another uh, behind the scenes thing. Is this film was shot in two days? It was shot in two days. Um, with with a POC with a POC. We did which one day of one proof shot. Concept. Made it to the one final. One shot exactly um, made it into the final film. So which two we'll, days. we can. <laughs> You can guess which shot that is. Yes, we'll, we'll, uh, point it, we'll point it out when we get there, which <laughs> shot is the POC. I well, think we you'd can, be surprised. Yeah, we can just play it. We can go and I think we can it. play it now, um, yeah. But, I just um, wanted to talk about that first That bit, first shot, um, I'm, like I was saying, we did all the splicing later on, but yeah. I'm glad that this was the shot that survived in its entirety because we, like, we wanted that Birdman um, respect. Yeah, I, it's tribute. definitely my... The Birdman. That's the first thing I think I told you about when we first started. This. Which, <laughs> which is that definitely sparked my ears because I f- I love Birdman. Um, I love it so much. That was funny because you weren't going to be on this project too. 
Right. Um, that's a that's a, another thing we can play a, it, and I want to we'll, talk we'll about. Play we can play it. it. Um, we can talk right, about we're gonna, it. We're going to play this. That's a big thing. Well, I was actually ironically out of the main five or six people in the main, like the head crew. What I was, I think, the last one to get involved. Absolutely, like, yeah. Selena, Chloe, yeah, Keenan, ev- everyone. Yeah, everyone was involved. <laughs> And then um, you asked me, I did. Do you want to co-direct this with me? And, and I, I said like, to Damien, I, I said, I said uh, yeah, yeah, we said, is I that said all right? to the EP, I went, can we do it? And he's like, yeah, you just got to share the mark. And it's like, we can okay, do, we can take that can risk. We can do that. Yeah. We can take the risk. Um, oh, uh, what, what risk, mate? We both did a really good job. That could have got, but that's the, that's a thing. Um, Get out there. Oh, the scene. Uh, all the oh, I love the stuff. scene. Uh, Here, this is the splicing we were Yeah, we can walk through it. So, okay, yeah. So this shot, we walked. We'll just, like, I don't know, pause at some point. But we'll start talking about this. So this we is watched, all one shot, what you're looking at. But then, then we spliced it with yeah, that. Yeah, and it ended up, we did this on the day. And um, when we figured out our cutting points and then applied the cutting points, uh, we had a couple of those moments where we were just like, holy shit, this is Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it really came together, like doing like, that little session there of looking at it. It was like one of those moments where it was like, "There's James Mooney, there um, he is, making his uh, uh, actor." I don't know, it's not a debut. It's definitely not a debut. He's our, he's our ABC but legend. Just, oh yeah, the ring. That's a. You want to pause it for a second? Oh, the ring. I want a good pause yeah, point. Yeah, I want to come back that. to that. That's a good shot to pause on. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we splice joined it, and honestly, it came out with. It was one of those moments where we were like, "This." We forgot just went about from the ring as well. Here. Because I loved the ring shot, and it was very late when I was like, "Oh crap, we haven't put it in yet." And it actually helps the cutting. The cutting helps the narrative so much more because it allows you to uh, open up a little bit more yeah. with um, shots. Because it was like when it was, originally it was literally, as you'll see, it was he destroys the room, he sits in the room, destroys the room, walks out. Whereas now it's we skip all of that and then yeah. come back to it gradually, and. The ring just didn't fit in the linear narrative. Exactly, that was it. Yeah, we couldn't find a way to cut the ring in when it was just everything. It just, just this jarring. screen, it stupid. Exactly. Well, it's this screen, and it was all um, getting James's movements to be consistent from shot to shot. So we really struggled to find a place to put the ring in. And then once we started splicing, we're like, oh, perfect. And yeah. then obviously having all the sound bleed in and out of each it's, other it really helps sell that. It's, it was a cohesion. really because, like I said uh, earlier. It was shot in two days, and our two days went from, I think, eight in the morning to four? Four. I think the first day we finished a little early. I think we it was eight to two, two. And, and then, then the second day, eight to four p.m. Yeah. And so two pretty long days. They were very long days, but... We had a great celebration that Friday night. Yeah, we all went to the we all went to the tab. Yeah, like eight or nine of us, eh? Uh, like so much of the and cast and crew were able to come down and celebrate. It was so literally good. every everyone came down except Keenan and no, no Keenan Ke- 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 came. Ke- uh, Chloe couldn't make it. Yeah, our producer, our producer, bless, bless her. But um, she's she was really great, but she couldn't come. And then we all got pretty sloshed. Um, <laughs> even general crew came along for that too. Yeah, yeah Abby, like, came, uh, Abby came. Abby came. Along. came JT. Um, JT came along. Our uh, lighting kind of uh, room lighting supervisor. Location supervisor. That's it. Lighting location <laughs> supervisor. The, uh, Can't remember the term. It's basically the guy who had to be there all the time um, so we could film. <laughs> to borrow, so the location we're using is Nexus Theatre, mm. and um, it was not the Special easiest thing Nexus. in the world to get it because they've had it. They have had a history with other films being shot there, so we kind of had to do a little work to get the place. And Absolutely. Chloe crushed it, getting a location, getting amazing. Time, so we're able to shoot it super early. The the reality is, and um, JT had to be there with us yeah. to supervise us. And he also location. JT helped a lot because it was oh. like, dude, what do we have to say to get this for the two days? And the funny part was, we were so organised that we were going to shoot the POC, and then they had lighting replacement. Or oh, that's right. And we got to be pushed back two weeks, but they gave us like a, they gave us those an days. extra two days. Um, instead of two days overall, we ended up with three. And seriously, that's I think that's saved. It worked um, out really well because I remember we were gonna we were gonna try and be heroes and shoot, the, do the whole two day shoot, um, and mix the PO because we we had to deliver a proof of concept. Um, it wasn't that we like were keen on doing that and then the final film we had yeah. to deliver the POC before doing the final yeah. film and we wanted to be heroes and do the whole shoot in one hit and then edit the POC as well as the final film. But because of um, issues with the Nexus, we only had the one day to shoot. Um, so but we, it just it worked, but it worked out, out so much better. It really worked out, yeah. Because it allowed everyone to get familiar with the space. 
um, which is a huge thing. And everyone got really comfortable by the time we did. Everyone it. got comfortable with working each other too. Yeah, like that's a. That's we had a, a day to work together and really get our rhythms going. And yeah, then, so when it was go yeah. time on those two days. Um, I mean, everyone, I, I'd like to just set. thank all the people that rocked up at eight in the morning to help us set up. I know we, we had a, we had a great and plus um our, the very first shot we did was our last shot in the film, so on our first day we had a lot of people show up. Yeah, that's uh, true. To be extras, faces in the crowd, if you will. Yeah, and um so you don't really, you don't, really you, uh, you don't see them, but they're there, and the sound you hear is them. So that's it, the, that's that's yep that's um, on that's live recording or, and that's great because yeah. Foley. Crowds always sound so fake. Yeah. Um, so having a legitimate crowd. I think in the final mix, there is a bit of a mix between both. There's a bit of... Not just... But they some it, of them even stayed past that to become theatre extras. So that's theater right. Crew. So some of the theatre crew you see in the background of these like tracking shots were also in that Yeah, like theater. A, and And I was in the theatre too. I think every single person who was there was in, was in the seats except for you and Selena. Selena and I think Keenan to get and sound. James, obviously. And James, but, of yeah. course. Uh, no, I think even... Oh, no, no Keenan no, Keena was up there with Keena us. Keenan was up there with yeah, you. So yeah. I think it was just you four and everyone else was on the seats. That was such a... That was a that was going to be a hard morning and Jesus Christ, did our crew just We, bring we had such a great crew. So many people Yeah, not just, just that. It was like even general crew who brought extra people along. It really helped out. And it, it, it does show, which is the best oh, part. Oh, it really does, yeah. Um... Obviously, you try and fill up 200 seats and be like, hey, come for half an hour. It would have been really cool to just have a sign or something outside. Be like, come on in. But then you got to sign release ha- form. Do so. we... Well, no, what happened? I think we did have a sign. I think we did have a sign at the front, Chloe organised. Yeah. And then she got people to sign the release forms before coming into yeah, the... Yeah, it was such a well-drilled thing. But... Yeah, it was really... And it, it was good to get that out of the way and then... And then bringing into a more close set where everyone else, yeah, who um wasn't just gonna be you know a face in the crowd, <laughs> um. To... How many how many times are you gonna pun? <laughs> uh, just twice, just twice. Okay, I'll do okay. it more. No, uh, we can keep going. Let's keep going. Um, before I forget, I want to mention, and this is a great thing that I didn't even know until after we'd wrapped. That oh, I think you all that moist, shot, <laughs> moist shot, delicious shot. <laughs> that's, um, that uh, that actually is. I just want to quickly say that yeah. shot. You can pause it if you want. No, that's all right. Uh, we'll uh, that shot. Was the one shot I... Re- yeah, Tom. That's me on the ladder. Yeah. yeah. I really wanted that shot in there. And I've always wanted that. I always pictured that shot. This shot here start. was the POC shot. Yes. When he slams the front. That's the only shot from the proof of concept we did that made exactly. it into the Okay, film. sorry. What were you saying? I was going to say, in that dressing room there, he's trashing right now. This was your detail. If you look at the clothes right there... Oh. Those clo- those are all the clothes that yeah. the heckler, the fan, and the critic wear. Yeah. And that I, I didn't know that till later. And I was like, that's the... Best detail ever. We were really thorough with our details. We really were. Um, and the hardest thing is to say that this film had a budget of 50 bucks. <laughs> That's Literally. the craziest thing. And like, uh, all those clothes are just my w- clothes. it went towards um, the posters <laughs> that and you Frank see Reynolds around. Shirt. And the Frank Reynolds shirt that the fan wears and everything. Yeah. I, I love the heckler so much. So this is... um We need to talk about James a bit more, because... He had a lot of dialogue yeah, to memorize. Yeah, do you want to just pause while we have all three Jameses in the shot? I think it comes up. We'll just do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll let the it The first cop shot but, um, is coming up. Oh, yeah, we can pause on the first. Yeah. I really like... The, uh, I want to talk about the cop shot, so I'd love to talk about James. And there's nothing better go. when you've got three Jameses on the screen. Oh, oh, oh I missed just missed it, it. Jake. Oh, well. I could go back. Yeah, bring it up. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh. There you go. There we go. I made it. <laughs> three comps. I'm in charge of it. Um, yes, so let's talk about the composition shots, because I think... The, the theory that we went into it is that we don't want to be showing off anything. We wanted to shoot as if it was four different actors. We just wanted to shoot it yeah. as if we weren't trying to be like, hey, look, it, we can make multiple Jameses on screen. We just it was- shot it as we wanted to and then did the work to composite him into all those angles. And the funny thing was the compositing was a really, really difficult thing to do at first, because yeah. you and I have never done something like this before. Not to this level, no. Um, So we had to learn a bit of masking and stuff like that, which obviously is great when you have to learn something new. Um, mm. God, it's a good shot. Um, <laughs> I know you're not supposed to like, but it's like, just clever. Um, especially when you get the critic one coming in later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like James had a ridiculous work schedule. Like, oh my god! Yeah, I want to talk about that. James I, had I love the, so I love much him to bits, but those he two days burns himself out all the time. And it, those days, he was he yeah. was working. So we shot on Thursday and Friday, two days. This whole thing. Oh, what was the Friday? Yeah. yeah. So the first day, 
uh, we shot the the last shot um, yep. and all the stuff you just saw then with him walking between the hallways and him trashing the the dressing room and all that. And then the second day, we shot all of this stuff with him so on stage talking himself. So basically, last shot plus first three and a half minutes. Basically. basically. Um, and then and then all of this stuff was day two. So day one, he he was working in the morning. We had like an eight. 8 a.m. start time, roughly. Yeah. He was working before then. Yes. And then I think he had to he make up for the schedule. He had, yeah. And then he had to work again after the shoot, which finished at around 2. Yep. And then he had a show on that night. And did he have a show on Friday night as well? Uh, he... I yes. think he did, yeah. yeah. But the the Thursday was the killer day. Yeah. Um, but he had, And then I up, think, getting up again at 8 for Friday. He had two consecutive, like, 19-hour days or something yeah. like that. It was something ridiculous. Um, so, James like, is our hero on this, because, mm. like, this was not an easy gig, as it is, on top of, no, like, No, you got to play work. four different people, right? Exactly. That's and, why I would never have done this, ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I could have never played four caricatures of... And, and I... It's very dialogue heavy in the second half. Like very, like we go yeah. from three minutes of pretty much non dialogue bar myself. Yeah, very, yeah, quite little. Frank Especially for says James one line. To learn. He says like the. He like, says the line. I can't just see him busy, and then and that's pretty much it. And then you cut him off. Really rude. Yeah, um, <laughs> I actually say the most dialogue in the first three minutes. Yeah, um, and but, then I think he catches up <laughs> to it the second half. Bloody hell, he does. But um, no, he had so much dialogue to learn, and he crushed it all in that one day. He never had like a moment where he was just blank. I think, I think it's virtually impossible to not... Because I think there was definitely a lot of moments where um, it would kind of bleed in a bit because he would have yeah. to do the lines, but then someone would have to bounce back the lines of the other character, but he yeah. also needed to memorise those lines because he needed to play that character as well in a different version of that shot. So, for example, what you see now, this is one of the last things we did was these um, comp shots where basically he's standing as Frank where he is right now um, has to do the lines, go through the whole thing, and then we cut, make sure the camera doesn't move. We have to make sure that was like a, yeah, we a marked priority. Yeah, marked it on the ground and marked everything. Marked it, uh, made sure it was held still. James would run over, change, get into the seat as, let's say, the heckler, do those lines, get all the timing rights, do the looks so he's kind of looking at the right spots at the right yeah. time. Then cut, he would get up, change again, run over, do the fan, and half the time we have to change SD cards during this. Yeah, as well. So there's a lot of running around and data wrangling while he was changing and doing all these lines and having people on. back. It was insane. It was a, it was a, it was a tricky thing, but it, it rewards you because it's like, look, you, if you're gonna have four of the same person talking to each other, there's got to be at some point where they're all in the same shot, so you could yeah. showcase they're all in the same room. Otherwise, it, it just looks silly if it's exactly. just if it was just shots of the fan saying his lines and then the heckler reacting and then. And then it just seems a bit like, oh, well, you could clearly see he, all it does change. But when you see something like this, it, it elevates. It, yeah, because this, this like is the I, first one right here, the first time. There are like, shots oh, like crap. this, and you go, the the production elevates itself. Yeah, you know? like it goes. It's like seeing shots like that where people go, wow, that's impressive, and it just elevates the value of your film. Well, that's the thing. This is this is here is the make or break. If we got this wrong then we've lost everyone. Yeah, we've and, lost it, the and it was looking like it wasn't going f to happen for a while. Um, I, mean, I don't remember any, like, real, like, worrying situation. No, no, I think we always... I think we had time on our maybe, side, too. We had so much time to edit. We had, like, several weeks to edit this thing, which was yeah. amazing. But, Thanks to Chloe getting well, those dates just, in really early. Exactly, so, yeah. Um, so we could shoot it, yeah. And if we didn't have the weeks... It could have been more of an issue, but I never, yeah, we never worried about it because eventually we came along and then I think you came, you found out how to do it. One I day. did it by accident. Yeah. So I was, I was kind of working on this archaic way of like just splitting the image like directly yeah, uh, to, cr uh, yeah, just to crop it all in. Um, and sometimes the camera positions weren't perfect. So like the seats that you're looking at now are probably a little smaller than they would be in real life because of the way it was all composed. It mm -hmm. still looks great. But um, if you were to put a camera where it is right now on the real stage, it might not look as nah. like that because the seats are maybe a little smaller or bigger than they are. But it looks it looks good here. And I completely forgot what I was trying to point oh, out. It's just oh, basic. Right, sorry, the masking. Yeah, because yes. I did it by accident where instead of like a straight cut uh, across the screen to composite the different Franks in, uh, it, I accidentally did it. So it was kind of more like a, a radius uh, yeah. With a more of a, like a fading effect, so uh, instead work. of being like a really sharp cut in the image, 
it kind of had this much more graded kind of overlay it, yeah. morph exactly yeah morph. It, and it looks it, it looks great and it's like one well, but it's, it's shots like that it's the first shot it's this shot it's like and the syncing with like action to sound, which exactly. sound was such a huge part. Oh, we spent a film. lot of time making sure the sound um, was all right for this. And I think uh, because you've really got to, if you're going to internalize dialogue, it shouldn't always be reverby, but it should have aspects of reverb. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, and this is all internal dialogue, really. It's it's him yeah. externalizing an internal dialogue within himself. That's true. So, uh, we can keep going. Yeah, but, um, and it all comes back as well, Keenan getting great sound on, on there throughout the day. You're holding a boom for Dude, his arms hours for must, two days. Uh, it's between him and Selena. Him and Selena. They, they have were... like a powerlifting team yeah, right there. Yeah, that was insane. They probably could have picked me up. I mean, hey, I had, to hold, I had to hold a coffee cup half the time. I like, know. I mean, gosh. I had, just, to, I had to I did wear so fake much. glasses sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and look uh, like a Melbourne hipster. Well, that goes into the compositing as well, because like every single time there's a, a, a match. Um, oh, I love that so much. That was a shirt you bought off Vista Print. Mr. Brent, to, um, sponsor me, please. Yeah. <laughs> I buy so much of your stuff. It's insane. But that shit's really funny because that photo came from James and that, I. That arm right there, that's your arm, That Zeke. is my arm. That so not twice. all of it's a composite. Some of it is Zeke because Zeke has a very similar build. To James, um, So yeah. James, he was able to like get some of his arms and stuff yeah, in. And, it's not like and it worked just as well. I've got a hairier arm than James, but you can't really see it. So yeah. Well, you're wearing his shirts. So, yeah. Yeah. So it just blends in. Uh, I love... Uh, we will just pause it for... Oh, beautiful. Pause it on a, a lovely, lovely critic. Um, oh, we got, we got a minute, yeah. It's coming out, that big reveal. The critic. I think the that. critic's my... I think a lot of people... The, they critic, lo- the critic's their favourite. Actually, I want to talk about this shot. That's a... There we go. This That's shot... That's a great pause. Is poss- that is a great... Um, <laughs> this is a really funny shot because this shot, I oh, reckon... the lighting was so fun in this Every one. one who has seen this film now thinks this is probably the best shot. This shot right here? Yeah. Wow, okay. And I find that interesting because th- this shot was It's so low-key as well. Was it, like, initially, we didn't know, like, we were thinking about lighting placement and we were thinking, oh, I don't know if an underlight should work. This is Chloe's shot. This is that Chloe came up with. Like, we were sort with of the thinking actual about shot? this shot. Like, we weren't thinking about it. She thought of the lighting placement. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I knew she came up with the pamphlet. The pamphlet that he's holding there, that's not part of the script that he's holding a little pamphlet no, 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 thing. Yeah, and that was said, Chloe's idea to be like, let's get that in. We've got it. Let's do it. And then, yeah, she said, she said, it's a shame he hasn't got a pamphlet. Yeah. And I had printed these out for my folder. And I was like, yeah. wait a second. I ran to the back. I remember yeah, I ran we, to the back yeah, of the stage yeah, yeah, and went, ran. pamphlet. And I was like, Genius. That was just that so was genius. totally like I literally just printed it and it was actually a mistake. I wanted to print a full page. Yeah, yeah. And it but printed just a half had it anyway, page. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll just keep it just in case. It but it makes like a so pamphlet. it makes so much sense. Yeah. It makes so much sense. And he does a little reveal where he it's, he's covering his face. Yeah. And the downward Such we put the light ad. there. We were like, because look, upward or downward lights are very harsh. You yeah. Know? Um. Whereas the left and the right were kind of like easy placements, but this one right. was like. Oh, I don't know if this is going to come out all right. And then when we shot it, it was just like, that's perfect. It looks amazing. And like, I love, we, I think we tested a few people. I think Abby was one of the first people we asked, where do you think the light is in the shot? And she couldn't figure it no, out. No, no one can normally. No they one? Can't, okay. and that's the best part. It's like. Well, my, yeah, it's literally right under his the, legs, kind of wedged in between those two no, seats no, at is the it front. The, is it the, the row in front of him? It's the row in front of him. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you know, I think that's, you're right. That's why the light's coming oh, in. Oh, the... no, because you're right, because the chairs are in view. Yeah, so it would be a row. Maybe, was it one, just one row? I think we tried two. Yeah, it's one. Yeah, so it's, it's one. one row ahead of him. That's why the seats but are lit. That makes more forward, sense. it's like... Oh, and it's, then it, it gets more of his like, body. Oh, it's But I, I reckon that out of general consensus, people watching this, they enjoy that shot the most. Um, just because it's hear like, that, because like a lot of it's work It's kind of like... That. At the end of the day, I know it's a like it is a drama piece, and it's always going to be a drama piece. But it does have underlining of like chaotic dark humor. Too. Yeah. So like his laugh and like his reveal. This, I find this movie hilarious. I always laugh. Yeah. There's it's so much comedy in it that's like, like subtle in it's a way. The chaos of your mind in a way. Yeah. When you think about it, it's kind of like when someone's in such a place as as the character of Frank. It's kind of like your brain has got all these things, and it's kind of trying to get a hold of. Um, the the psyche of a live performer. Yeah. Like, um, and I remember when I wrote it, it literally was I was watching 
Um, I'm not going to say it because everyone makes fun. I, I was in Canada. <laughs> uh, literally, I say that. You were that in there. Canada when you wrote this I was. Script? I was. Whoa. I was in Canada. I was like, uh, um, yeah. And it was just a, a spiel. I, I give wrote. him a little crap for it. I was watching. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I did it in your birthday speech. Yeah, That's it was sweet. in my birthday speech. Uh, so I wrote the script in Canada. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wrote it because I was watching a, a Robin Williams special, and I was kind of like. It got oh. a little bummed out because I was like, uh, I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, because I was there. like, that guy, uh, Robert Williams, like he attempted to kill himself five different ways before he killed himself. Whoa, I didn't and, know that. Yeah, it's pretty heavy stuff. And I was like, it must be really weird being a funny person, but feeling so like your life is kind of like pressed down yeah. all the time, and you're worn out, and you're on the road, and and things like that, and. And then it has that Birdman-esque element of the critic character kind of being this sort yeah. of, like, reason you're being dragged down. Like, this person can destroy your entire career with just, like, one, like, drop of a hammer. And Well, that's... Because it, it's, simil- it's similar to, the, um, you know, um, the Michael Keaton character in Birdman anyway, um, where he's... Yeah. It's like, what's, what's his reason for wanting to make this art? Is it to affect people? Or does it like make him feel better? And, you know, it's got yeah. You got those questions attached when it really relates to and hecklers are a, a huge this. part of comedy. They try and they they're like, but they're more like that annoyance, and that's kind of the chaos between the fan and the and the fans. Are, fans have always there's always a toxic fan base. We always talk about toxic fan yeah. bases and how. They're, they're up with them when they're up, but when they're down, they're ready to just be like, oh, they were so much better five, yeah. ten years ago, and it's like... It's it's really the perfect, like, selection that those free from, you know, the heckler who's like, he's trying to be funnier than the performer, you know, and then, like you said, with the fan of just the, yeah. you know, go hard or go home sort of attitude. And that's all fan the placement, too. It's like left, right, middle... It's like just it, yeah, it, it, oh, colors it's, it's just, everything. It's just, yeah, it's so good. But that shirt, James's fan shirt, we took that photo when we were um, we were in Frio, and we both wanted a coffee, and we walked into Raw Kitchen, which is a, a vegan restaurant, but we didn't know it was a vegan restaurant. Okay. So we ordered. I ordered a vegan beer. And he ordered a vegan cider. A, what, what, it was, what are those? I don't know what makes a beer <laughs> vegan, but uh, apparently it was a vegan beer and it tasted like shit. And <laughs> James and I were just pulling, we were like, oh, this is like we were kind of making fun of um, the, uh, like, just the whole, like, like, the whole snootiness about the place. Right, and we were both okay. like there, like, oh, this is so nice vegan stuff. And, uh, and that's when he posed for the photo that you yeah. see in the fan and shirt. And then that's, gotcha. that, that's that photo. I love um, that photo so much. It's a great photo because it kind of looks like he's drunk on stage and he's having a having a. Giggle. Well, it would be a promotional tool for his uh, previous tours. Exactly. So uh, it uh, just kind of goes in with the attitude of, like, he's a fun... It's Blood like the one where out, he's, like, so not drunk the in the news article and he's throwing up. We oh, that was. I remember we that story. We literally were yeah. walking around Perth City, just chilling, like having it. We had a couple of drinks at some bars, and someone had thrown up in the street. <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, James, you'd be a really great idea if you go and stand right next to that spew, put your hand up against the wall, like you've thrown up." And it smelled horrific. And he was gagging while doing oh, it. No. He was like, "I'll do it." And we were laughing our head off while trying to do it. I was like, "Yeah, just look really," good. and it looks really good. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not it's actual spew, and it's yeah, it's, it's a real deal. It's gross and disgusting, and no Photoshop on those photos. No. And then literally the other one was like him doing a Slav squat because he was running around doing Slav squats. That's uh, just right. Just a photo of him doing a Slav squat. Nice. And I was like, but it's, yeah, it's just little things like that. Uh, well, it all goes back to like your old uh, production designer just selling. Just selling the you know, location. Sell, and know, the funniest part is James it. now is on our next film is the production designer. Mm. So it's kind of like done a full circle. But for me, the biggest thing, one of the biggest things in film that I think people really don't pay attention to is production design. They think mm. it just appears like it's just there. Yeah. And it's like, no, no they're thought about, you know, like I, we think, put... I think early filmmaking, a lot of people fall in that trap of like, we don't need to dress this room. Like mm. it is what it is sort of thing. It's like, you a shot can inject, be pretty, but what's in the shot, it. you know, like yeah. what makes a person, a person, the things that are in the shot, you yeah. know, um, you can make pretty, you can frame a pretty, uh, shot or, you know, do crossfades and shit like that. Mm. But, if the things in the shot are boring, bland, and nothing, 
you're not going to remember it. It's yeah. just going to be a nothing. It just looks like you walk into an office building and it's just an office, you know? It's like, it's got to have meaning. So like his dressing... That's the thing. You could add so much meaning by having that control. It's all about Dude, control. we should talk about your car driving to set with all the stuff oh in your car. Oh my God, yeah. So um, me and Zeke, we drove together to location both days and uh, thank you Nexus for letting us leave mm. a, uh, the majority of our uh, equipment and our props and everything so first, overnight. The first day... The first day, uh, we had to squeeze virtually everything, all the equipment and all the props and everything it's you see in the film. being production design and the director and having most of the camera equipment um, is that's all going to fit in your car. Yeah. And we had all of that. Like, I had to bring in props. So I brought in, like, three bags of props. You brought in, like, all your camera equipment. Yeah, so I had we had all the equipment that um either that I had or um that Murdoch uh, lent to us uh, for the production, and that, and that includes like these giant like jibs and bloody dollies and all this oh, stuff, God. like tons of stuff. Um, on top of and like the type of stuff you bring, you bring like tons of like bottles and like the food that goes on the tray. Oh, God, I just um, remembered the bottle thing. Yeah, no, and, oh no, the bottles. Let's not talk about what ended up in those bottles. Or oh, I what, think we should or, talk. Or what Do you want to talk about that? You can talk about it if you want. Cause I think um, <laughs> this is a testament to James. Oh, he Love dealt, him he so much. A lot. Um, he had a big two days. But yeah, basically, yeah, we had a lot of stuff. We had to get it in the car. And it was pretty funny because it was like hitting the back of our heads. Um, so in those earlier scenes where Frank's drinking, um, basically the alcohol is apple juice. It's yep. slightly diluted apple juice, so it looks like whiskey. Um, because you're not allowed to have alcohol on set, much to uh my protest with um the producer yeah. didn't let me have alcohol on set. Oh Chloe, ah oh, Chloe. <laughs> um, anyway, so James had to drink a lot of apple juice, um, a lot, and I or like, I think he went through four liters in yeah, the two days or something, insane. um, because he just kept drinking it. Um, cause he drinks a lot, Frank. Um, and then one time, I think it was day two. It would have had to have been day two. Yeah, it was the second day when we arrived. Yeah. I said to, I saw, I, I saw mold in the bottom of one of the glasses and I said to James, I went, don't drink out of this bottle cause it's just going to be in the background and it has mold in it. Mm-hmm. And then about halfway through the day. Right. Cause we had to do a couple of pickups of him drinking in the dressing room. That's why we had to do a couple of pickups right at the start of day two. Yeah. Um, he fucking reached for the bottle and he poured it in his glass and he took a drink and then realised halfway through he had just drank in mould. <laughs> he just ran to the sink and threw up and it was pretty funny. Delicious. And I sat there laughing my head off. I went, I'm so sorry, James. <laughs> but <laughs> that was him. so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> it, was, it was. It's things like that, though, where it's like, that's just a story. It's a story it's from a story. Set. You know, he was a trooper. He did a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, we can keep going. Yeah, let's let's click play on this on this bad boy. But that was a good good reveal shot. Uh, oh, great. A lot of zooming. Well, it's interesting. It's the zooms are a combination of zooms that Selena done on the day, and then zooms that um in editing were uh, like cropped in because we shot this um in a high quality 4K on the GH5S. Helps so much. Um. So and then released the film in 1080. So we're able to do a lot of cropping. Mm. without any loss of uh, quality or anything like that. And well, I always would say recommend shooting in 4K, eh? Yeah. 4K, eh? Okay, eh? Yeah. <laughs> shooting. Yeah. No, nah, it's great. It's so it's so useful. Um, but yeah, this is definitely out of everything that I've worked on, this was like the highest quality um, thing that like, we sh- in terms of like cameras and like the, the, the of, bit of rate equipment. and everything. A lot of equipment. And we had a ton of equipment, yeah. Like that jib, we used the jib for the final shot. Um, which is like this giant crane that's like kind of stationed onto a dolly that you can then roll and kind of do all these different 3D movements. It it's was very, it's it's a very insane. Specific um, tool. Very specific, yeah. Uh, I love that mic drop there. I and the sound has a little echo to yeah, it as well. Another comp shot. Another comp shot, yeah. That was that was a tricky one. That was a tricky one. But yeah, see, just this the lighting. Very... This is the same lighting setup, and it works when he's sitting down, when he's standing up. It just works in every situation. Yeah, it works. It works in the context of exactly what the character is. Yeah. Um. Oh, I love it so much. And these these break down. Now, all of this was shot in such out of sync orders because we left most of the comp stuff to the very end of production. 
Because it was one of those things where if we ran out of time, we See, could, I we could like last those off two that bit like They're frantically zoomed and then the critics just are nice. Oh, Call it's a little, little smooth or a little less um, chaotic. It's, con- it's control. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. With oh, the, the lights in the background. That was an accident. Yeah, do you want to pause that for a sec? Yeah, the oh, perf- perfect, perfect pause. Perfect, perfect we pause. were going to do this shot um, and then the last shot of him leaning down. Or was it the other way around? I'm sorry. I think what happened, the when, when we turned the lights back on, we had the lights set up. This is the last shot of production, isn't it? I think so. Well, what happened, this was the very, very end of the second day. Uh, JT, he had the lighting set up um, for everything to do with, like, you know, them in the crowd and stuff. And we got to these final shots here of him, like, pondering and walking away. So uh, JT went to turn the lights back on, the regular lights. And the background, it just started, like, the lights started going crazy. They started flashing. We're like, we, we couldn't figure out what in the world was going on. But, but we, we got a shot of them in the background of because um, it's kind of, of like of, I almost said the, re- the return to James st- stability. But you've got to go through that instability. It, it works instability, but it, it works. It, it just it, looks so good, and that was complete fluke. Yeah. And I think I think JT had to like reset the entire system. Yeah, the so then we went on to, to go, go do back. the stuff up the stairs, and then That's come back to the shot. Right, and then we came back to this. Now I think you're correct. I think this was the last shot of the whole I film. I think it is. I'm positive. Yeah. Pretty close to the end. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the last one, looking back on it. But um, I really do like this. It, this is also a little cropped because JT up in the top, you could see the bottom of the of like kind of a glass window, yeah. the God box as we called it. Yes. Um, and you could see oh, the J- ISO debate. The great. The ISO debate. Um, you could see JT up in the in the box, so we had to crop this a little bit. The, uh, the ISO debate was the footage when this is probably the the one time when it got a little um. Not rough. It was still a good set, but it was like we got we kind of butted heads more than usual on the ISO debate. Yeah, well, the, see, the the thing is, co-directors. I was talking to I was talking to Abby about it the other day. It's yeah. like with it, when you're co-directing, you guys have pretty much got to be on the same page the whole way through. And I think we were for like ninety nine percent of this film. Yeah, there's like because at the end of the day, director is vision, right? So if you co-direct, you're splitting. Split your vision, the vision two. between two people. So the vision can quite easily go from one track to two tracks, and then you end up with this a mess. Yeah. If they don't work with each other and are cohesive, it could very easily yeah turn into a yeah, mess. Yeah, and that's why most people kind of shun away from co-directing. Yeah. Because um, there's heaps of co-writing, co-producing. Yeah, that's true. That I mean, that's the and same process you would unit, imagine. Second unit photography. There's heaps of that, mm. but there's never generally, there's only, like, what, the Coen brothers? That's probably about... Like, well, you've got the Russo brothers and the Duffer brothers. They have for, to be brothers. For... They literally have to be yeah, brothers. Yeah, it's true, they they're brothers. brothers. They're always brothers. Yeah. That's the trick. I just think it's... Uh, and I said, like, yeah, <laughs> you've got to literally be on the same page. And I kind of... And this, that was the one time I don't think we were. And it's... And it was literally a technical debate. It wasn't even a creative thing. I mean, obviously, like, in editing, we had a lot of... Debates, but in editing, we could really test out our theories. Yeah, because right yeah, it's kind of like you, when you put a time, because we had such a little amount yeah, of time. Yeah, when you're so shooting, you're rushing, so you don't have time to try we, we everything. We whipped out. up a, a seven and a half minute film, you know, um, or seven minutes. Well, seven minutes, not including credits. A seven over minute a two film day shoot. in two days. So when you think about that, that's that's pretty good. Three minutes it's a day. It's impressive, yeah. You know, when most uh, what short films uh, are like... Sometimes, yeah, you can get a 10-minute uh, film it takes like five or six days to shoot. Yeah. So, for what like what we whipped out and the time that we had, but it, it also meant that there wasn't a lot of time to... To muck around or test theories and stuff. And that's, that go, that's a credit to pre-production. A lot of that stuff was very much Oh, we, we had about, quite a few meetings. We thought about lighting placement. We... I. We and when we had the POC, we actually did a basic walkthrough for that first shot and things like that. Well, one like, of the benefits of co directing is that we really were able to split our um, kind of contact time on set. Yeah. So, like, you could talk to James about like an acting thing while I was talking to Keenan about a sound thing, or vice versa, or like I could talk to Chloe about um, a lot of the time stuff or like kind of where we are shot yeah, wise while you were kind of talking of to Selena you and talking out a to shot. James. Oh, and there's a great, there's a great photo. you're chatting to Jay, you probably could just pop it in. You're just like, oh, there it is. Yeah, that's um, true. But, and it's great because in the other room, I'm coordinating like 20 
people to do stuff in the shot. Yeah. Um, for the first You're shot. You're talking to a lot of the, the extras, extras um, and telling them what they should shot. do. Yeah. Because um, obviously they go, what am I, what am I supposed and, to do? And that's and a like, lot of choreographed stuff. Like, yeah. you need to be here by here, you step here by here. Literally, yeah, it's literally like... And then people would be like, what do I want to do? And it's like, okay, well, look at that light sheet or, or go check the sink. Or, yeah. Or both be chatting in the corner. And then when James walks by, give him, like, a scowling look and things like that. Like, yeah. yeah Just little it, directions it, it's like It's dividing that, yeah. time. And I think if there was one director, That was the, probably one of the been... biggest benefits on set. Yeah. Was yeah. that because we were on the same page for so much of the film, we could do that. We could split up, talk to different people, and it yeah. came out very cohesively. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, there were a lot a of pre- it's a pre-production thing too. It's like you couldn't just jump oh, exactly. in. And you couldn't be like, "Here's the shot. Let's see it. Good luck." It, yeah, it exactly. Be... We knew what we were like. There was a lot of collaboration with, uh, you know, with the with the from a co-directing standpoint. It's like me and Zeke have to agree on these things before we go ahead. We yeah. can't just. You know, be like, oh, well, you know, I really want to do this. We did rehearsals with James. We did rehearsals. Uh, I did recce. So I went into the theatre a few weeks before we shot the POC and sent you guys footage of the theatre. That's right. Yeah. We got like a big amount of like photos and video to get an idea of the space before we did our POC. And then even in the POC, got to know the space. So it's like, it's just preparation. And, yeah, exactly. But it was, set. and that ISO debate basically was um, to just how up, much ISO. <laughs> yeah, literally just what ISO level should this shot yeah. be on? Because it was it was James when he walks out from the hallway uh, onto the stage that you see now. But there's a lot of light was, transition. There was a lot of light transition, so we didn't know the right level of ISO mm. to hit all those lighting marks. Um, and it became a case of Zeke was up in the box with JT. I was kind of on the floor, uh, sitting next to Selena. Cause I, in that shot, I'm climbing the ladder. So yeah. I'm actually in that shot. Um, and it was just a lot of yelling from one end of the stage to the other in this giant room. What's, what's the <laughs> ISO at? It's pretty and fun. we kept pushing it up and up and up. And the thing is ultimately the result, it almost looked the same at every ISO level. Yeah. I think we opted for some middle ground in the end. In I, the yeah. Post. I can't remember which shot It wasn't we the lowest. On. It definitely wasn't the highest. I think yeah. it was something in the middle. Um, and it just looks great. It looks, it looks really great. So, At, in the end of the day, I think there was like, we got like five or six takes of that. I think only one of them, we were like, we can't use this because of an ISO related issue. All the others, it was like, how's the performance? How's the camera work? It was all those elements yeah. that we decided on. And that's the important thing. It's, I mean, it's good to have creative debate, but uh, obviously because we had a time stamp, it's like, as soon as the debate gets too long, you're then losing time. Exactly. Um, What's well, that thing of like, can we try again? We do, we have time to try again. Yeah, a lot of the later uh, shots on the first day are very much like, let's do it, let's go, let's do it. Um, Excuse me. I'm very, uh, I mean, you've worked with me on a couple of things now, so you can see I'm very no-nonsense kind of person. (laughs) Um, It's been a bit different with our, our next project, we'll be sitting here doing commentary probably for, that'll be funny. Ah, that'll be an interesting one. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the thing is, uh, going back to this one in the in the co-directing, because I think we definitely have different rhythms. Um, I mean, we're, we're very much on the same page for a lot of the stuff. Yeah. But I think um, definitely one of the biggest differences in our directing styles is I, I, I'm a bit more kind of playful and get a little more distracted. Uh, you have a softer touch. Softer touch. I am very blunt and like... Well, more, more to the point and more like... Let's get this going now, sort of thing. And it's a, it was a good combination to have. Abs- cause, absolutely. Yeah. And, I mean, you've you've seen. Uh, I, I've carried that over. And then some people can yeah. find that. Some people have no problem with it. Some people uh, think it's a bit s- serious. But I think you should treat this like it's a you're being paid. You know. Well, that's the thing. You know, and it's it's, a, it's an, not an easy job to shoot a film. No, when you've Doesn't got like six people coming up going, what can I do? And like, that's that's a real thing. Those well, that was my thing on face. It was the first time I had a really hands-off direction because usually when I'm directing, I'm also doing the camera. I'm also doing this. I'm also doing that. This was the first time that I was, you know, I was a co-director, but I was really hands-off of a Enjoying lot of the, it. the uh, lazy life. It was the lazy life. I sat there with a coffee... Like just talking to people and you know yeah so, people were pretty pretty it was more just it was, extras it was, like it was overwhelming was. having like so many people all right what do I do next sort of thing because they would get stuff done they would set up equipment oh so quickly. yeah like that first day where we like we 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 were like. Oh, it's going to take we an had hour an, and a half. We had an, an hour, hour an hour and a half to set up that first shot. And we shot. did it like 30 minutes or something. We did it so quickly because we had like, so many people and they yeah. were just on the ball. And it was like... And it was so And they kept coming up to insane. me and went, 
there's nothing left to do. I guess yeah, we could do ready. some James stock roll or something. Yeah, it was I don't insane. Know. Um, that was my favorite part of me. But like, on, like we could talk about like directional kind of stuff like that. But it was still one of my most favorite sets to be on uh, faces because it was it was just such a chill set. And everyone was so happy to be there and yeah, so committed to the I, project. I look back on it now, given the last couple of projects I've right. done. Um, so like the film we're currently working on, it's like I mean we we knew, even at the time we knew how smooth Faces was going. It was so smooth. We still look back on it with fondness, of course. You know, and that's a that's that's a real uh, that's the best part. I think. Yeah. I think looking back on that, I so James and I have this conversation all the time. We're like, it's not the set for Faces, is it? Like it's <laughs> that's the I didn't know that's the say. I'm joining in now. Like I'm yeah, joining in on that. It's that because that set was just so good, and there was that moment. Probably finish off on this actually. Um, that moment on the second day where we had lunch. Uh, right, we had a lunch break in our and I second was... day, and that was a nice like cathartic thing for me. I was getting really stressed out that second day. We had lunch, and I felt so much better myself. Yeah, but every, everyone, oh, it was a good moment. Yeah, because it was like we were break. all sitting around eating, and we were talking. Well, originally, because I think Chloe's a vegetarian, right? Yes. Um, and Selena's a vegetarian. Wait, no, Chloe's a vegan actually. Which I think she was a vegetarian at the time. At least she might have. I I don't know. She's one of them. I was. <laughs> <laughs> she's one. Um, she's either devoting herself either to way. the joy of dairy. <laughs> oh, uh, dairy's so great. Yeah. Uh, but we, we started talking about like the whole like uh, that sort of thing, but then it kind of led into. I don't know how we ended up there, but I remember I was I had my phone out and I had read it out and I was talking about horrific sex stories. <laughs> I remember this. Yeah, the horrifying like yeah. sex stories and the reading them out. Everyone was losing their. Like... Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, it was such a good time. See, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm playful when it's break time. That's yeah, exactly. that's the thing. It's like it's break time. Yeah, we can chill. I'm the same. Uh, but that's the thing. That with... was a great lunch break. I remember when it, it, so when well. it comes to me as a director, it's like that's a job, and then after the job, we're friends again. Yeah, like yeah, you know, that's the workplace. That's the not workplace. Well, that's the thing know? as well. Like, I mean, like I try and have that mentality as well. I was like, when I'm when I'm in, especially when I'm not in a, le- a position of leadership. Uh, so okay, not a director. I'm do- I'm doing a very specific role instead. Um, outside of that, I try and just head down, do the job, do as best job you can, yeah. sort of thing. Um, and that's, that's the best way to succeed in the industry. Just, you know, do your job as hard as you can. Absolutely. So. I think, I, I just think it's, um, it's interesting cause it's literally just like, you've got to do it the best you can. And if it gets heated, it's, don't take it personally. It's, well, I mean, it's a job. I um, mean, look at the result for faces. Like, yeah, I can't, I can't name one person on that set who half asked their job. No. Everyone was so into it. Yeah. I I've, I walked away smiling from that set and having a really positive experience. And honestly, it, it's led to kind of a domino effect of wanting to make more and more stuff. Oh, absolutely. Because um, you're inspired. You see the final thing. Yeah. But it's like, and, yeah, it's yeah. like, look, uh, and uh, those two days were very stressful days because we had so much to cover in such a small period of time and there was so much to do and I was like and we were in the oh thick shit of it as I gotta well. act too yeah. so it's like oh I just keep stacking these well, jobs we were in on. the thick of it like we give James credit because he had so much on those two days even just outside the film yeah but like we all we all did have our thing I remember I I I hated I hated this as a co-director of this film I had to step out for about an hour I hated it because, no, because I had a class that I had I couldn't get out of I had to do a presentation it was like worth 20% of my mark so I had to step out do that presentation while we were in the thick of like an eight hour shoot and then come back after yeah. they had to jump class. Another benefit though to having a co-director. That's true. That's, that's very true. That's, that right there was the perfect example. They were example. able to do that, yeah. It's just like, oh, you're gone. Well, but like, that's how, that's how insane set. these two days were, you know. And were... We, we saw James's show that Thursday night. Oh, we did. We, we were so did. happy. We were so happy. It was it, such like a calming thing. There's a photo from the second day of the shoot I put it on Instagram. It's me still on the couch. Just oh, chilling. that was we wrapped. We that was wrapped, my that wrap was photo, we and I was so happy. Are oh, you on the couch? I think that's like the final photo. On if you go on the um the photo gallery online yeah. for the film, that's like the final photo. Is you on the couch? My, it's my favorite photo. It's just like I was one. such a happy because I, I nearly cried. If, if really, we, when we called wrap. Cause that's that's my first film. I f- yeah, I feel you. I almost cried when I wrapped on um, Disconnected, which yeah. isn't out yet. Don't look for it yet. <laughs> but no, I get, I completely yeah, get that. Like when we did that shot, I was like, I just directed a film. Like yeah. that was, and, and, and we were sitting. 
I think the last thing we could talk about should be um like yeah. So I felt really like kind of emotional, and I don't think I'll get that with home again. Like because it's you only get you only get your one once, you, you're right? One. Yeah, well, yeah. well, faces yeah, was just so like personal in that in that level. Yeah, because it's like this was my like my script, and now it's no longer it's it's, it's a real it's a production thing. that it's everyone's there. put in. And it's, yeah, the I think crew. that's possibly you break into like it's awesome. And I remember us finally finishing the film. And... Oh, that the night we <laughs> the, literally when we finished editing, and you're going to see it in a minute with this last shot. Was us that last shot? Us adjusting the lighting, and we would literally render it, check the lighting on like some screen, like different screens to get different like uh, it took brightness. Like two hours. Brightness. Yeah, it took hours. Uh, we just kept re-rendering over and over again to, we get were the, not, to get the exact. Yeah, we thing. were not. If we weren't happy with it, we were not delivering it. Yeah, we were and like, then and then we rendered. We've the already come this far. Part. We might as well commit a couple more hours to it. Yeah. Well, that was the thing, you know. And, um, and then we watched Thirteen Reasons Why Season we'll Two. We watched Thirteen Reasons Why Season Two <laughs> on a giant screen while we were rendering. <laughs> eating pizza. This eating pizza. Yeah. Just in one of the uni labs. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, and then uh, I think your birthday wasn't the following week or something like that. It was coming up. It was a few weeks after that. Yeah, we had a cigar. We, I think the day we wrapped, I'm pretty sure it was the... It was, sorry, the day we finished editing was, the, I think, the 25th or the 26th of May. Yeah. So it was a few weeks before my birthday, but it was coming up. Yeah. You, gave me, you, gave, me my, you gave me my 20th birthday present that night. Oh, 21st uh, birthday, sorry. I 20, did. I the, did. The book. I did, with the Cat Empire. Cat Empire drawings. That if that'll happen personally. in one of these cover trees, we'll, we'll, we'll have a Cat Empire well, well, the song ti- in one the, the of our ti- movies. The title of this film is a Cat Empire reference. It is. Uh, from The Crowd, right? Yeah, yeah, there's a song called The Crowd, and they say Faces in the Crowd. Oh, and we did um the QR oh, code. the QR codes. So if you look, there are three <laughs> Faces in the Crowd posters throughout this film. They're all three of them obviously in the, there. obviously the first one you see there's, is the Yeah, the one, the one on the very holding. opening shot, and then there's a couple on walls. The one um, that James slams into the door? Yep. And, and then the one he walks past in the hallway, walking to the stage. Mm. So all three of them you should have like screenshot all three. Yeah, like, exactly. Bang, bang, all bang. three of those posters have QR codes in them with links to different. Should we say what the links are? Yeah, yeah. So, so one and of you them can li- actually. We have tried them too. They like, work through the film, through the film, through the screen, and they you work. Can, you can. So one of them links to ZKJ the Productions, fir- the YouTube channel. The first channel. poster you see is the ZKJ one. Okay. So the red one is ZKJ, and then I think the second one, the green one, the one on the is door, clicker. That, so that leads to my Clicker Productions website. And the third one leads to the Cat Empire song, <laughs> the, crowd. the Crowd. So we were like, and they all work. Another little touch. They all work. And it's uh, like, oh, I love it so much. It's a, uh, We were literally, when we were designing the posters, I was, I was like... We had that because it came up when we were doing it. And we're like, oh, we should do this. Yeah. Yeah. In this room. It was this very room. We're, okay. we're watching the film on the same screen that we ordered all the yeah. posters That's, and stuff and on. The, and the shirt yeah. and the stuff like that. Full circle. That's, that is a full circle. Yeah. yeah I, I think all right, that's let's, all let's play it. Let's, let's, let's bring it home. Let's bring it home. Let's play it. Let's play through the end. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this stuff was all at the very end. The last stuff we shot. Um, and like we said, that previous shot was the very final one we did. Um this is I great, did that little... full focus. That's right, Zeke. You you had the camera on this I one. I did. Uh, I because Lena's arms were hurting, and I was. It like, was at the very end of production. I've been a coffee cup. She, yeah, exactly. For two days. <laughs> so this is the final shot we're talking about. It's the first one we did, and we're using the jib here. So no, we CJ's got voice. Some three day. CJ's doing the voice. We actually recorded. Me and Zeke, we both recorded that line, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> used it in the did, trailer. Used. I used all three of them in the trailer. I love to that. emphasize that. That was really good. Um, and yeah, it might be hard to see, but there are like a like two dozen people in that in that crowd which you would see in the credits yeah exactly um, um, so there's no lie there there's your name buddy see CJ just came in and uh, did the voice he's got a very in this uh, radio voice again yep Selena um, did the cinematography Chloe produced it yeah no it's um, and I think the last thing we should talk about is probably the song right yeah so right now um, well, wait, I, don't, I don't know what the mix is going to be on this audio but right now we've got Melissa's song um, Voices in My Head playing so, Zeke, you take us home with that. How did yeah, that all happen? Um, that's really funny. Uh, you might want to pause it on the... Uh, there we go. Perfect, perfect, probably, perfect. Probably the time to pause it. Perfect. So, last thing we've talked about, um, this song... We wrapped this... already when this all happened, yes? Well done. It was all done. Yep. Yeah. Um, we had... We were in post. We were editing. Um, James and I... If you haven't figured it out, we're uh, we're decent friends. <laughs> um, You're close. We're yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so one day, like James and I, do we go to Nando's probably like three times a week. We're 
seriously, it's gotten to the point where it's kind of, I might as well just be sponsored by Nando's, because <laughs> Nando's, if you're listening. Um, but, it, yeah, no. Um, so, we were walking to his car, and we ran into Melissa, and Melissa is, uh, she used to go here for theatre, and now she's at Whopper doing music stuff. Um, she's got a very good voice, obviously. And I was telling her about the film, and um, basically this is the, the the bottom line of this production, which outright, I don't think, I think that's probably the most positive thing I took from it, is, is passion breeds passion. Yeah. And oh, absolutely. They saw how much we, like, our crew wanted to make this film. Yeah. And how ruthless they were in pre-production. Mm. And how passionate and production. they were. production, yeah. Yeah, that when we talk about it, we talk about it with such a, a positive sort of like, yeah, this was amazing. And yeah. everyone goes, I the want a bit of... The passion comes through. Yeah, oh, I want a bit of that. Like, so, I mean, I talked about this script heaps. For ages, yeah. And shut up about it. But, and I, we were just at dinner and I was talking about it. She's like, oh yeah, I'll write you an original song. And I was like, oh, it's a uni thing. So it's like... Like it, like it's the uni student well, we had mentality. Talk, I, did we talk about it prior? I think you mentioned to me it would be cool to have an original song, original and song. I never really like thought about it. On Originally, that it was yet. just gonna be like stock, like your stock piano gets, or something. Yeah, get like something stock to play credit over, song. You know? And she was like, "Oh, I'll write, I'll write a song for you." And I was like, "Yeah, but we're all you like, you know, it's that uni mentality of, uh, oh, I'll do something, but not actually." Commit yeah, we to didn't it. know how serious. Um, she was. So into I this sent yet. her the the script, and I said to her, she was like, "What does it want to sound like?" And I I was like, "Told I her some of the themes and stuff." Long Black Veil from Johnny Cash was the song that um, I wanted it to kind of ah, sound like because nice. um, I like my Johnny Cash, um, and I kind of like his sort of got like a real like. Calm tone well, his in that approach, song. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a... real docile. I literally was watching Walk the Line this morning. Oh, <laughs> so good. Nice. Um, I want to make a movie like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and literally the next night, James and I went to an open mic night, and she was performing, and she literally was like. Yeah, this next song is for uh, Zeke. It's for his film coming out. And <laughs> I nearly choked on my beer. So you had no idea she was going to do that. Okay. No. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't at this open and, mic. And um, I nearly choked on the beer. And <laughs> she sang it and I nearly cried dead. I nearly cried twice you, at this Yeah, production. you and James <laughs> literally nearly cried. And we did that moment where both blokes were clearly about to start crying. But yeah. we were both like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, not happening. But it was like, I was just Because like, that was the first time you heard it right, right there live. Yeah, yeah. That's insane, eh? Yeah, and I was literally like about and, to cry. And this, at that is, moment... this is one day later, isn't it? Yeah. This was, this was the day, 24 hours. one day after you had she literally, told her about it. She literally, because a guitarist who was playing it, she literally went up to the guitarist who was playing the yeah. song for her and gave her the notes, like gave her like the, oh, the guitar wow. chords yeah. to play. And I was, I was it just was taken so fresh, back. Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna cry because it's like, because that, that that's like that's like the the yeah. ripple effect, you know? It's like, like clearly I care about this project so much that people want to people help. want to jump on it. And then when people help, it's a ridiculously humbling experience because oh, you're just like, uh, you, it's completely the opposite to where I was last year with film, and then yeah. this year, and um, it's like this year, it's like now I'm like, oh. I just get a crew together. Let's make something awesome, and it's like I get excited to make films. And yeah. I think this this project really just really did brought that. It home. It's a great song. I got it on my phone. It's well, a... that's the thing because I you told me about it, and I I hadn't heard the song. I didn't know I didn't know Melissa or anything no. about that. And then you gave me like a, a like a phone recording, like a really kind of the first recording. Yeah, the it, very yeah. first recording. And I listened. I was like, holy crap! Yeah, because you lose it. I was like, I had no clue what to expect yeah. from it. And I, I was like, holy crap. Like, it's like you said, like when we were talking about it, it was like how much the production elevated just from this thing existing yeah, and being a part of the that. film and now. She got it mastered in Colombia. Yeah, exactly. She had it so, mastered over in Colombia. That's insane, man. Like Worldwide. It, worldwide I, production. I, I, like, I mean, thank you so much, Melissa. I'm like yeah. never going to not. And, but it's weird because it's like when you hear that you're like that's and for James it's it's really personable too because it's yeah. like James was Frank 
So this song is exactly. about Frank. So it kind of gets in there. And, then it's and like, well, that's what I love about the song as well. It's like it so works on its own merit. Yeah. And I can I can listen to it and relate to the song without even thinking about the film. Yeah. But in relation to the film, it is also so perfect. Yeah, well, it's like... And then it's like, yeah, for me, it's like, it's like oh, this is my baby and now uh, yeah. I've getting given this. And it's like... This to me is like, this is... This is... Because uh, the... Look, Faces is kind of like... Uh, I... Like it's it's when it's when you write a script mm. and it's your baby. So when people do things like this, it's like you're like, wow, this this song <sighs> is this is for me. Like this is actually yeah. for me because we can listen to a song and go, I relate to this song. But this song is like, yeah, like you had a part in making this exist. Yeah, and it's no, like no. every time I hear that, and like uh, history will go by and we'll have probably a couple of original songs written in our films in mm. the next couple of years but I mean this will always be the first one and, and Jesus I love it I love Christ, it so much good song yeah. that's, that's me that's yeah. all I got hard act to follow that's what I'm going to say on that one yeah Very hard act to follow I have, uh, we have I'm going to I'm going to hit play on this again yeah, bring it, bring it. We, everyone the gets their moment everyone gets their moment ZKJ and Clicker Productions first so that's, ZKJ film that's our yeah this collaborative film um, and, uh, there's the title stay tuned for Estranged <laughs> Yeah, no, so we are, we are both co-directing uh, Estranged later in this year. I don't know at this stage. I doubt it's going to come out this year. No, it would probably come out but, but, um, next year at least. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I, festival run and stuff That's like true. That. we got a festival run once we go for it. Um, we had our first screening for this film at Murdoch, um, along with a bunch of other like short films that were created uh, within those classes, and it was a great, it was a great night. About sixty people that rocked it. Yeah, it was a good crowd, and I remember, I remember this distinctly when our film came up because we were promoting the hell out of it at the time to go to the screening see our film. Um, that when our film came up, we we got a massive cheer from like half the room. Very proud from like, that very first just shot. Being proud of the film. Oh my it? god, absolutely. I mean, you know, you look at like every single person on the credits here, like did. Maybe not Kevin there. I don't. I don't know who Kevin is. That, it's, that's some of Kevin the. Kevin stock... McLeod worked really hard on yeah, those songs. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, he provides some of the stock. Um, that's it. That's it. He provides some of the stock music. Um, that you, you yeah. know was free to use as long as we credited him. So um, he's probably the only name in those credits that we didn't have a direct kind of connection with. But the music came together because we actually mixed a lot of yeah, everyone... those tracks that he provided. Um, into, into, into kind one of, another, yeah. yeah into I a, mean, everyone's just going to remember that song at the end. Oh, and exactly, absolutely. Look, That's the one. It's a great song, and I love her for that. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's, I'm proud of the whole project. It's just, yeah, oh, it's, uh, so it's good. just. I guess. Uh, I don't know how you end one of these. How do you end one of these, Jake? Well, I guess. It, shows, he, well, I, I listen to a lot of commentaries on like TV shows and that, and usually yeah. they just cut mid sentence because the movie ends. <laughs> Ah, it's right. too late. Well, it's too late we're going to finish with, I finish. guess, um, thank you so much to everyone who worked on it. Yeah, well, thank you for listening to this if massive got, if director's got, commentary. If you got this far, um, we yeah, thank you thank very you. much. Um, um, we had a lot to talk about in an you know, eight-minute film, basically. It's just eight, great, eight, but at the end of the day, what is it? Uh, how many how many hours of a film go into every minute? Oh, film? exactly. You know, you know, many, 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 many. You many. don't want to count that. <laughs> That'd be crazy, but... Well, that's yeah. the thing. I'm glad we did the little system where we could pause it and take our time to Absolutely. go through everything. Couldn't do anything in eight minutes. Exactly. But, but um, thank, thank you so much to everyone. But yeah, I just want to get. I just want to give another shout out to like the main, the main crew of like obviously um, us two as directors, <laughs> and then <laughs> Chloe and Selena and Keenan and James, of course, James Norton, um, for their massive contribution, and then everyone else who really pulled their feet up to make this thing mm. as awesome as it is. So yeah, to our. Uh... They were great. Everyone yeah. was everyone was super, and hopefully, uh, we'll well we're already working with some of them again. So oh, exactly, absolutely. It's only a matter of time until yeah. we end up working with all of them again. Exactly. At some point. So oh man, you don't, you don't want to disband a crew like that. You yeah. don't want everyone to do it. So yeah, thanks for uh, yeah. listening. Thanks for listening. Um, we've got some more promo stuff coming up soon. So check yeah. it out. We've got a blooper reel coming up soon and uh, some extra videos. There were a lot of bloopers. There was a, yeah, there's an alternate ending as well. Oh shit. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, for that final shot, there's a different version of that final shot and that will go up as well soon. He so. blows up. He bl- <laughs> James blows <laughs> he just up. explodes. You know the cheap phone app where the missile comes in? Yeah. Expl- yep, that's, that's what it is. That's the, that's the spoiler. All right. Well, thank you for watching and listening. I'm Jake. I'm Zeke. And, uh,
Thank you for watching Faces in the Crowd. Thank you.